think them are last year's Jake's. Can't be sure. I see some beards hanging though, baby. Turkey time. All right, so here's your daily vlog update. It's uh, February 16th, 2018, and I wanted to finish the skid plates, but I'm not gonna put any more on. I wanna leave air flowing through there, so uh, I'm gonna leave that. But this is what I had to do. Does anybody recognize this? Anybody with a tractor, with skid steer, quick connect? Yeah, I'm gonna try to show you this with the selfie camera just All right, one better look at this, okay? So what I had to do is I had to unbolt the bolt here, okay? And these are like uh, kind of cotter pins, ho cotter holders for these uh, bushings in there. So I had to take that one off, that one off, and I had to disconnect this one at the top. And because this was mushroomed, I had to pound the old one, this thing, I had to pound it through and it took a long time and a lot of grease and I had to pound it with a hammer and a uh, uh, basically a jury rigged ball peen to get that thing out finally but now she's back up and running I'll be careful from now on if you have one of these guys and especially if it's outside or a little rusty be careful because most of this is steel okay except this uh, the lever is aluminum so when you're cranking on steel parts with an aluminum handle well you can guess what can happen so I feel good about that good deal all right so my new buddy Clark got me a little motivated to make a few targets for the capper range so this scrap steel I have you see that shape right there if you notice where that's from, that is from the trusses, the Douglas fir trusses. We ended up with a few extra pieces. It's really heavy and dense steel, but obviously I don't know how it will hold up. So uh, these two sheets coincidentally were uh, 30 inches. So that's perfect target size, 10 inches by 12 inches, but I figured I'd double them up. So. I don't have all the right tools, but this uh, Milwaukee skill saw did it well enough where I doubled them up, cut it into three pieces, and you see they got these holes in them. Well, I just flipped them over so there won't be holes in them. So what I'm going to do, I'll double them up. Now this is every bit of three-eighths. I measured it, maybe a smidge more, but that should be plenty for pretty much anything I'm going to shoot. So then I'll weld them together. And I'll go show you the hinges that I'll weld on them so they can flap down. So once again, following the guidance of my newfound friend. Boy, I wish Clark didn't want to be camera shy because I'd love to get him on there explaining his target range a little more. But these are uh, welding hinges. So uh, just weld the steel to these and you get them where they set up. Boom, you shoot them and they fall over. And you got to make a bench underneath them. So this is where I'm at at the moment. This, this whole thing is what I had to uh, change. All right, because you see how that's all stripped there? I guess I am a little too strong for steel and aluminum, maybe, or they're making things cheaper, I don't know. Um, so this was a bear, taking that all apart and, uh, and getting this all together, okay? So now it's perfect. Um, I had to jury rig and add two or three washers on here because even the brand new ones they put on when I reefed them down they all bent and tore up 